Ooh, good morning. Y'all, can we get somebody else's face on those announcement videos? I'm over him. I'm so serious. Golly. Well, can you believe it's almost Easter? Crazy. I feel like every other weekend is basically a holiday. I think Mother's Day is, what, two weekends away or something. Feels like it anyways. Thank you. But time is absolutely flying by. Well, guys, if you don't know who I am, my name is Brayden. Me and my wife Ashley over there, we are the youth pastors here at Reach Church. Um, As Pastor Sarah was saying, this is Youth Takeover. So you get the youth band. Um, Like she said, we are so blessed to have the band that we have. Um, She said 15, 16, 17-year-olds. I think it's actually 13, 14, 15, and 16, 17-year-olds. So, um, yeah. And they're not just, hey, get a mic and try and sing. No, they got voices. I mean, they can sing. So I know as a youth pastor, that's not normal. And so I feel very blessed. I'm so proud of every single one of you guys. Y'all are awesome. And you guys save our butts every week. Love it. Well, today we might do a little bit more of like a youth type message um, after service. Uh, A bunch of us and the students and leaders, we're going to go upstairs, smash some food, and then play the most epic games of hide and seek and stuff in the church once you guys all get out of here. So it's going to be a good time for us today. Um, But man, I wanted to take just a few minutes and kind of give you guys a little bit of an update what's going on at Reach Youth, some cool stuff that's been happening. Um, I know PC, the last couple weeks, he's been sharing that we've been having guests, and he shares guests that come on Sunday and things like that. And it's, it's been a lot of guests lately at Reach Youth. I would say that we went from like 45 students to 85 students in just a matter of weeks. And yeah, and the, the thing is like, yeah, it's really cool. And that's not a testament to me by any ways. I'm telling you it's a testament to the students because they're just being bold and inviting people. I mean, they're getting in their classes and they are bringing them here. All right, this is all them, which is incredible. I love their boldness. Um, We had a couple other students tell Ashley on Wednesday that, you know, they had a school project presentation, and they did it on Reach Youth. And they just, you know, they talked about it, and at the end of the presentation, they invited their classmates to join them on Wednesday nights. Come check it out. Boldness. You know what I'm saying? That, That stuff just fuels me up. That gets me excited. And then another thing that happened on Wednesday is we had a couple students that they've just been coming two or three weeks, and they came forward and they wanted to give their lives to Jesus. And the cool thing was they were, afterwards I got to talk with them, and they were so genuinely excited about the decision that they make. You know, it's one thing to say the prayer and, you know, maybe walk away not knowing what you're doing, but when you walk away genuinely excited, like I just believe that they fully get it, and I believe that the Lord is 100% doing something in their lives. So I'm excited about what's going on at Reach Youth. With that being said, I have the best job in the entire world. Sorry about you. I won't stop saying it. I have a lot of fun. We love it. Cool? Well, guys, in, in youth fashion, I'm, uh, before we get into the message, I'm going to have one of the youth come and pray over the youth. So if Case could come up here real quick, he's going to pray for us, and then we'll get into the message. Thank you for this day. Thank you for letting us all join together and um, have Brayden speak to us of the word of Jesus. Um, let us take it and let us run with it and preach it to other people. Let's have a great day of church and let us learn something and let us just have a great rest of our day and great week. Amen. Amen. Could you give that to Ashley? I just got done saying boldness. Man, these students, they're not afraid. And I'm just like, I'm torn back because me in high school, I was a little bit timid with certain things. So very much proud of them. Well, today we're going to talk about a subject. Um, Title is Gated. We'll kind of get into that a little bit later. Uh, But this is one of my absolute favorite subjects to talk about, whether it be with people to teach on, dig into, whatever. And that subject is we're going to be talking about our thought life. All right. I believe that there are certain things that we need to be teaching, especially to the new believer. Um, One of them being, I believe, we need to teach the new believer who our Heavenly Father is. I also believe that we need to be teaching the new believer who they are in relationship to their Heavenly Father, you know, talking about their identity. And another thing that I wholeheartedly believe that we need to talk to the new believer and the growing believer about is renewing their minds, okay? I think it's so evident in this day and age that people are not managing their thought lives, even though we know it is 100% our responsibility. It is 100% our responsibility. We know this because if it was God's responsibility, every single one of our thoughts would be positive, righteous, holy. And who in here is willing to admit that's not what your thought life looks like all the time? 
All right? Fair. So it's on us. That's something that we need to be looking after. I truly believe that nothing limits a Christian more than an unrenewed mind. Then an unrenewed mind is one of the biggest obstacles keeping believers from going deeper. I say that because going deeper in faith requires a renewed mind, deeper in healing, being led by Holy Spirit, living in peace, learning God's voice. They all require a renewed mind. So we see the value in number one, us understanding to renew our minds, but also number two, the need to teach and disciple others to do the same. All right? So we're going to... So we're going to um, discuss how not to give certain thoughts attention, how to take thoughts captive, and ultimately how to renew our minds. Sound all right to you guys? All right, let's roll. First one we're going to start with is going to be Romans 12, 2. I'm going to put this up. This is going to be a little bit of Bible study this morning. We're going to look at this in a number of translations, okay? But let's just follow along. It says, in the Passion, it says, stop imitating the ideals and opinions of the culture around you. But be inwardly transformed by the Holy Spirit through a total reformation of how you think. This will empower you to discern God's will as you live a beautiful life, satisfying and perfect in his eyes. Let's look at the New Living Translation. It says, don't copy the behavior and customs of this world, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn and know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Notice we're not talking about addressing how you talk, about how you drive, about how you read the Bible, about how you act. God is addressing how you think. We need to transform how we think. I want to look real quick at the Amplified Version. It says, and do not be conformed to this world any longer with its superficial values and customs, but be transformed and progressively changed as you mature spiritually by the renewing of your mind. Focusing on godly values and ethical attitudes so that you may prove for yourself what the will of God is, that which is good and acceptable and perfect in his plan and purpose for you. Man, renewing our minds is part of our complete transformation in Christ. All right? So, yes, when you accept Jesus, you become a new creation. Amen? But you've got some steps to take now. And one of those very important steps is renewing your mind, changing the way that you think. And before we get into the how-to of how we do that, I want to look at Philippians 4, 8 real quick. We're going to start with the Amplified Version. It says, finally, believers, whatever is true, whatever is honorable and worthy of respect, whatever is right and confirmed by God's word, whatever is pure and wholesome, whatever is lovely and brings peace, whatever is admirable and of good repute, if there is any excellence, if there is anything worthy of praise, think continually on these things. Center your mind on them and implant them in your heart. Last, we're going to look at the Message Version. It says, summing it all up, friends, I'd say you'll do best by filling your minds and meditating on things true, noble, reputable, authentic, compelling, gracious, the best, not the worst, beautiful, not the ugly, things to praise and things not to curse. Guys, that's my father saying this is what a renewed mind should look like. This is God's example to us that, hey, when you look at your thought life, it should be looking like those. All right? Absolutely, but I think it's a fair question at this point to ask, who in here can honestly say that, yeah, that's what my thought life always looks like? I don't see a single hand, not many of us, right? It's not necessarily something that all of ours looks like. And as believers, we are the body of Christ. And yet too often the way that we think is no different than the rest of the world. That just doesn't, that doesn't sound right to me. That doesn't sound normal. Not at all. Now, I believe there's sure to be a few people in here who you've probably got a pretty good grip on renewing your mind. I mean, we, I believe there are some saints in here. And what I would say to you is I would really just encourage you guys that you are the ones supposed to be duplicating yourself. You are the ones that are supposed to be discipling new believers, other believers, in how to renew their minds. You have a responsibility to be teaching people how to do this. This is one of the basics of Christianity. And if you've got this under wraps, please replicate yourself. Please. We need this. Absolutely. We know it's a needed topic in today's world because, come on, suicide, depression, anxiety, they are all at an all-time high. An all-time high. And if we could begin to help people to renew their minds, I believe that that number begins to go down and down and down. Some of you guys might be familiar with Dr. Carolyn Leaf. Okay, she's a, she's a Christian. She's a neurosurgeon. And um, she talks a lot about the science behind the brain that also, re like, basically supports the Bible. 
and things like that. And she made this statement. She shared that in, in recent studies, they found that 75% to 98%, 75 to 98% of current mental, physical, and emotional illnesses today come from your thought life. Yikes, 75 to 98%, and it's not just mental illnesses, physical illnesses are a result of your thought life. That slapped me clear across the face. I had to start thinking about it. Man, what, where, what am I been thinking about? Because if it's that serious to where it can affect my physical body, I really want to be careful what I'm putting in my thought tank. I like this quote. It says, the greatest weapon against stress is our ability to choose one thought over another. Our ability. Your ability. Then there's this wise man I met. His name's Chad Stewart. He said, you cannot have a positive life when you have a negative mind. But we just got done talking about how our mind doesn't really look like this. So is it possible that we're not renewing our minds? Is that possible? Because I believe that renewing our minds is actually a daily thing. Not sure about you, but I'm beginning to see some value in our thought life. I want to pull up John 10.10 10 real quick. It says, the thief comes only to steal, kill, and to destroy. How many know he's not coming after your handbag, ladies? And I guarantee you he's not breaking into your house to steal your television. That's not his mission. So I wonder, what is he stealing? Could it be your joy by going with depression? Is it your peace by, by way of anxiety? Is it fear taking away your comfort? Is he going after these things? Is he, is he trying to steal your identity for, by getting in your head about your self-worth? That makes sense to me. Those are all things that have absolutely nothing to do with my Heavenly Father. They have everything to do with the enemy, and they have everything to do with your thought life. Depression, anxiety, fear, self-worth. Come on, we all know somebody suffering with any, some of those. We have to start teaching how to renew our minds. Amen. Pastor Chad recently spoke about unity. And I'm just blown away by the potential of a body of believers who are continually renewing their mind to the word of God. Renewing the mind is taking our old way of thinking and swapping it with God's way. Okay, it's stopping wrong thinking and replacing it with correct thinking. That's what renewing our mind is. You know, when I was in the dating stage of life, um, you know, if I had a birthday or maybe Valentine's Day, you'd exchange gifts with your girlfriend or whatever. And so I had a few gifts, you know, they had sentimental value. I would hang on to them. I'd put them up in my room and there'd be memories attached to them. So I'd keep them and things like that. But when I met the one, when I met the best thing, what I had to do was I had to take a trash can up to my bedroom and I had to start throwing some things away. I had to pitch all of it, gone. Don't need it anymore. I had to clear the old memories to fully commit to the new ones, okay? Much like a believer needs to clear out your old way of thinking and fully commit to God's way of thinking. You have to fully commit. I just believe some of us are holding on to some thoughts that need to be trashed. You know, when you look at that list in Philippians and you, you spot something like, oh, I've been dealing with this, man, that's something that needs to be renewed, it needs to be replaced with God's vision on that. Is it the way you think about yourself? Is it how you care about others' opinions? Is it about finances? Is it about health? What is it? Where do you need to have some renewing take place? I tell you what, this thing, this and the way that you think need to be incredibly in sync. Incredibly in sync. Absolutely. These two things should match up so incredibly well. And too often we just find that it doesn't. And come on, we have to admit the frustration that when our experiences don't match what the Word of God says that they should be and can be, that frustrates me. When I'm praying something that the Bible says, man, that frustrates me. And I just believe if we would renew our minds and we would filter and watch what we allow to ourselves to meditate and dwell on and think on, I think that starts to change. Renewing your mind can absolutely choose, change everything. Let's look at 2 Corinthians 10.5. It says, we demolish arguments and every pretension that sets itself up against the knowledge of God. And we take captive every thought to make it obedient to Christ. We take captive some thoughts 
to make them obedient to Christ? No. Every. Every single thought. Every single thought. We have a command to take captive. What is taking captive? Taking captive means to arrest each thought. Examine it. Test it. Question its right to be in your mind. Captive. The first step to renewing our minds comes from taking every thought captive the moment they show themselves. This is the beginning of renewing our minds. I believe very much that we all have a thought gate, okay? It's a place where thoughts present themselves and before, that we have to approach them and whether we give them permission to come in and hang out any longer or we send them away, right? There's this gate. There's this moment in time when you have a thought that you have the ability to choose. Am I going to take that thought deeper and farther or am I going to send it away? There is. I'm telling you there is this thing. Let's think about it. You see an attractive girl and you're married. Hey, you've got a choice. Do you go to the second, third, fourth, fifth thought? Or do you stop it there and say, I'm married. I love my wife. She's the most hottest thing I've ever seen, right? You made a choice. You had that moment where you could go one of two ways. You just lose your job. You have a moment where you say, that's okay. God's got my back. Or you say, oh, my gosh, how am I going to feed my kids? You start going into that second, third, fourth shot. We have this gate where we choose whether it gets a second thought or not. Now, I imagine that some of you, you've never tried this idea of taking your thoughts captive, and you're like, Brayden, I don't know that moment that you're talking about. And that may be very valid, because I believe that your gate is probably just wide open, and you're so used to just thoughts coming and going as they please, because you never check them. It's a thought, so you think that it deserves your attention. It's presented itself, so you're just like, oh, yeah, this is, come on, hang out. Let's see if you're worth anything. Let's see if you have value. And so they just come and go as they please. And I just think when it comes to renewing our minds, it's time that we close that gate and we start checking every thought that tries to get into our house. I believe Holy Spirit is the one who helps us at that gate. He can help you close it. He can help you open it. He can help you discern what needs to come in and what needs to go away. When a thought goes unchecked at the gate, it becomes accepted, considered, dwelled on, and established. Be careful what you're letting in through that gate. I noticed this in Genesis 3, that Eve struggled with this exact same situation. Um, you guys can throw it on the screen real quick. Um, this is kind of a long one. Just hang with me, and we'll kind of pick it apart just a little bit. But it says, now the serpent was more crafty, subtle, skilled in deceit than any living creature of the field, which the Lord God had made. And the serpent, say, Satan, said to the woman, can it really be that God has said, you shall not eat from any tree of the garden? Next. And the woman said to the serpent, we may eat fruit from the trees of the garden except the fruit from the tree which is in the middle of the garden. God said, you shall not eat from it nor touch it, otherwise you will die. But the serpent said to the woman, you certainly will not die. For God knows that on the day you eat from it, your eyes will be opened. That is, you will have greater awareness and you will be like God, knowing the difference between good and evil. And when the woman saw that the tree was good for food and that it was a delightful to look at and a tree to be desired in order to make one wise and insightful, she took from the fruit and she ate it. It said that she noticed it was good for food, delightful to look at, able to make one wise. What is she doing? She's meditating on the idea. The opportunity, the idea, the thought, it presented itself. And instead of saying, it said that she knew what God said. She quoted to the enemy. She said, God said, don't eat of that. So she knew what the word of God said. She knew what the right thing was. But when it presented itself, when the lie presented itself, when untruth presented itself, she took it to the second, the third, and the fourth thought. She started meditating it. She established with inside herself that this is truth, so I should eat it. And what did she do? She ate it. And now we're all suffering the consequences for it, right? Dangerous. Dangerous when we accept a thought that is not in line with the word of God. Dangerous. It says the serpent said, you will certainly not die. That's the moment she should have taken the idea captive. That's the moment it presented itself at the gate. And she should have stopped it right there. She said, come on in. She gave it a chance. Every thought, every thought gets checked by you guys first. And I think it's fair to say, like, Brayden, that sounds like a lot of work. I mean, we have thousands of thoughts every day. You do. And I don't think you have to stop at the gate the thought of, how do I lift this spoon of cereal to my mouth, okay? 
How do I wash my face? How do I comb my hair? I get it. Those you don't have to, maybe. But these other ones, what takes some focus and intentionality in the beginning will eventually become second nature. If it sounds like a lot of work, I'm telling you it's not. You remember when you learned to ride a bicycle, your full attention was on balance. Okay? It didn't matter how fast you were going, anything like that, your, all your attention was on balance. Some of you guys, when you start renewing your mind, your full attention needs to be on that thought gate, what thought is presenting itself. It'll take some intentionality. But just like riding the bike, eventually you don't even realize you, you're doing it. You just naturally do it. Same way will happen with your mind. Your mind will automatically, naturally check things at the gate, and you will have that opportunity to renew and take them captive. This is making sense? Okay, cool, cool, cool. So we got the taking a thought captive part down, right? We've got it held hostage. It's at gunpoint. You've got it. It's sitting there at the gate. Now, how do, what do we do? How do we throw it out? Once you take a thought captive at the gate, you renew. You renew. Renew means to replace. When a thought comes up, you can't just say, oh, that thought doesn't exist. You have to replace it with something. It wants to take up space, real estate in your head. You have to replace it with something else. Okay? How we renew our minds is to take the lie and replace it with the truth. Let's try this out real quick. Um, you guys know, like, we live in a swipe left, swipe right kind of generation, right? Teenagers, am I right? It, correct me if I'm wrong. Swipe right means I like what I see. Swipe left means thank you next. Am I right? The opposite? Oh, it's up and down now? Okay. Well, it was swipe right, swipe left. Maybe it's both. Maybe I'm just wrong. I'm an idiot. I'm aware. You don't have to tell me. All right, so what we want to do, though, is my point is we want to swipe right or we want to swipe left on the thoughts that come to our mind. So if you guys would, throw that first word up there that I gave you. Okay, sick. The idea of being sick pops into your head. Is that from God or the enemy? The enemy, good job, of course. And we know that because we know the word of God, which says that we have the right to healing, that Jesus already paid for all our sicknesses, all our diseases, so we have healing. Very good. Let's try it again. Next word. Not desirable, God or the enemy? Enemy, okay, we know this because God was said, actually, you're so valued, I'd give, you up, I'd give my son up just to have you, okay? Your value is the price of my son on a cross. So I know that you're desirable, I know that you're valuable. Cool, doing a good job so far. Next word. Loved, God or the enemy? Absolutely, and we know that because God loved us so much, and it, the Bible says that he's constantly thinking about us. He knows the hairs on our head that's constantly changing every day, all throughout the day, so he's constantly thinking about us. The Bible says he sings songs about us, Okay? We know that God loves us. So when you have a thought like this, what you need to do is take that as truth, accept it in, and build on it. When that thought comes up, build on it. Okay, loved means that I'm loved for this reason. And start talking about what the Bible says about when you're loved. Because that way, when unloved approaches the gate, you have something very substantial to replace it with. When unloved steps up and says, here I am, you say, actually, I'm loved. And I know that because X, Y, Z. You've got something to show it. Expose it as a lie very easily. Build on those good thoughts. Next word. God or the enemy? Enemy. You guys are really good at this. <laughs> this is what we need to be doing at the thought gate. It really is this simple. It's, it's going to be one or the other. Is it something that God would say, something that God would present to you, or is it something the enemy would present to you? It's very easy. And this is all I'm talking about when I say there's a thought gate. When it comes to the gate, take it captive. If it's good, let it in. If it's bad, replace Renew. We can do this. We're only able to do this, though, if we know the character of God and we know the word of God. The way we renew or rather replace thoughts in our mind is by first knowing God's character and his word. Because the word is your filter. Every thought that presents itself, it gets filtered by the word. Does the word say? If it doesn't, thank you next. Right? Anything that's not God's character or God's word, it has zero business taking place in your mind. Zero business setting up real estate in your mind. It's not for you. Yet again, we see so much value in reading our Bibles. So much value in reading it daily because if that's our filter for our thought life that we do continually throughout the day, this is a valuable thing that we need to be doing. Don't hate me for calling teenagers, adults, whoever out at this moment, but 
hey, this is why what you guys are looking at on social media, this is why what shows you watch on Netflix and Hulu, they're huge. Don't tell me you're trying to renew your mind when you're watching that trash at night. You are setting yourself up to fail. You're saying, hey, let the thoughts, the ideas present themselves at the gate. You're not over here thinking about how you're going to renew your mind every time that they do. Oh, just close my eyes at that scene. Lie. Even if you do, you're thinking about it. You know what I'm saying? Don't tell me you're trying to renew your mind when you're watching the trash. It's just not true. Don't tell me you're trying to renew your mind if you don't read your Bible other than Sunday morning. I won't believe you. I got one final thought for you guys. We're going to look again at Romans 12 too. You guys saw it. Is that first verse? Yeah, yeah. The last part of that verse says, let me find it. Uh, let's do the, uh, the NLT. Okay, but let God transform you into a new person by changing the way you think. Then you will learn to know God's will for you, which is good and pleasing and perfect. Paul is saying changing the way you think is key to knowing God's will for your life. How many of us know a young person, a new believer, anybody that doesn't know the will of God for their life? This is key. Changing the way that they think is key to understanding God's will for their life. We all want to know what his will is for our lives. I would encourage you guys today, man, start asking God to help you with your thought life. I used to drive to work, and I would just be like, I'd be like, God, arrest me in my thought life today. If I start thinking about something that doesn't belong in my head, Make me aware. And I'm telling you, I would be having the randomest thoughts just driving, and it's like Holy Spirit said, hey. And I was like, oh, yep, and I would replace it with truth. I'm telling you, Holy Spirit's a lot better helper than we give him credit for. And if we would just choose to listen and just maybe give him the opportunity and maybe make that request of him, like he said, his answer is yes and amen. Like these are the things where he's like, yes, I will do it. (laughs) Ask him to help you at your thought gate. Make you aware when a thought approaches your thought gate. I think we make it easy to ask God for the big things that we think we need in life, but the seemingly small things, we're just like, we don't even bother. No, ask him for these small things. These small things make a world of difference in our lives. Ask Holy Spirit. Start renewing our minds. Start affecting the people that you know at work. New believers, old believers. Renewing our minds is key. Let's pray, guys. Thank you for watching the Reach Church YouTube channel. Stay connected with us on Facebook and Instagram. Hit the subscribe button and share this video with a friend. You can also support the ministry by visiting reachchurch.us give to help us continue reaching and equipping people. Thanks again for watching and God bless.